Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. We begin with new information on the man who fired a gun inside a Grand Forks apartment building. Thank you for joining us. I'm Callie Hubbard. Jordan Schwer has the day off. 42-year-old Jeffrey Aldred has been charged with reckless endangerment and discharge of a firearm in city limits. The bullet went through three different units. Luckily, no one was hurt or injured. This happened around last night at the 600 block of First Avenue South in Grand Forks. Police say there wasn't much damage to the building. This is still an active investigation, and police are urging anyone with more information to contact them. Taking a live look outside on your Tuesday afternoon, it's sunny outside now, but don't let that fool you. It's pretty chilly. What we can expect on your New Year's Eve, let's check in with meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli. And thank you, Callie. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, the main weather story this afternoon is the really cool temperatures out there. Let's take a look at what we are seeing now on the weather maps. Currently at 10 degrees in Fargo. We're near 10 as you make your way across uh, Lakes Country out toward the Fever Falls area. Some areas into the Northern Valley, Northwestern Minnesota, still into the single digits, but the warm air is off to our south and to our west. The Jamestown area, an air temperature of 15 degrees. Let's take a look at those current winds. They are flipping around to more of a southwesterly direction that will help to pump in warmer air. Wind speeds now 5 to 15 miles per hour, but right now we have very cold temperatures and with a little bit of a wind, we do have wind chill values in most areas into the single digits below zero. Now, other than that, we have complete sunshine. The storm is well off to our east and uh, as uh, looking for our next weather maker, we have an increase in the clouds, some snow out toward Montana, Idaho. That will uh, get into our viewing area as we go through the next 24 hours or so. Until then, mainly sunny skies, a high of 15 through this afternoon. We will give you an update on what to expect for your New Year's Eve forecast, as well as the next week ahead. That's coming up later in the newscast. All right, thank you, Justin. North Dakota's population has reached a record high, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. There are now 762,000 people living in the state an increase of 4,000 compared to 2018. North Dakota is the fourth least populated state in the United States behind Alaska, Vermont, and Wyoming. In Minnesota, the population growth is slowed, growing only 0.6%, a slight decrease from their 0.7 growth at this time last year. The state currently has 5.6 million people. Some are concerned that this slowed population growth could lead to a loss of con a congressional seat. That decision will be made in December 2020. The last road closure in the metro after the weekend blizzard has reopened. According to a spokesperson, roadblocks were pulled down from 19th Avenue early this morning. The road was shut down during the height of the storm because when the snow flies and the wind howls, things get pretty ugly along 19th pretty fast. Patrol officers report that many residential roads are still in rough shape in Fargo, but street crews are out cleaning things up. One problem that keeps resurfacing is along 52nd Avenue South. Police say it's been cleaned a few times, but the wind keeps blowing snow drifts in. City snowplow drivers are asking police for help getting stranded cars out of their way. We're told a few cars have been towed. The funerals for the three people killed in a farming accident are set for today. Stephen Bozel, Kurt Bozel, and 12-year-old Alex Bozel died last week after they were overcome by fumes while working in a silo on a farm near Millerville. Kurt was Stephen's brother and Alex's father. The Bozel brothers were both volunteer firefighters for the Millerville Fire Department. The family asked that instead of sending flowers, that people plant a tree in memory of them. The family also has a GoFundMe page. Visit our website, valleynewslive.com, for the link. Dozens of Iraqi Shiite militiamen and their supporters broke into the U.S. Embassy compound in Baghdad today. The mob was angered over deadly U.S. airstrikes that targeted the Iran-backed militia over the weekend. President Trump is blaming Iran for the embassy breach and said they will be held fully responsible. Ali Arousey reports. 
Iraqi Shia militia supporters have broken down the U.S. embassy gate door, stormed inside the compound as gunshots and sirens ring out and fires have been set. Now, earlier in the day, hundreds of protesters and Iran-backed militia fighters had assembled near the U.S. embassy in Baghdad to condemn airstrikes that killed 25 of their fighters in Iraq. The protesters had initially held funerals for the fighters killed in the airstrikes in a Baghdad neighborhood. From there, they marched to the sprawling U.S. Embassy in the heavily fortified Green Zone. Initially, protesters shouted down with the USA, hurled water bottles, smashed security cameras around the compound, and hung yellow militia flags on the walls of the embassy. It now appears the situation has taken a much more violent and serious turn. An Iraqi security source tells NBC News the guards inside the embassy have used tear gas grenades to try and prevent the demonstrators from moving towards the main buildings inside the compound. President Trump sent out a tweet saying Iran killed an American contractor, wounding many. We strongly respond and always will. Now Iran is orchestrating an attack on the U.S. embassy in Iraq. They will be held fully responsible. In addition, we expect Iraq to use its forces to protect the embassy and so notified. The Iraqi prime minister has also sent out a statement asking the protesters to leave the area. Ali Aruzi, NBC News, London. Seven armored vehicles with about 30 Iraqi soldiers arrived near the embassy hours after the violence erupted. In our consumer alert this afternoon, if getting your finances in order is on your list of resolutions, check out your credit report. Your credit report affects your ability to get a loan or a job and can help you avoid identity theft. Credit.com, CreditKarma.com, and CreditSesame.com all offer free looks at your credit score as well as the credit reports that influence it. If you have a big financial decision to make, financial experts encourage you not to rush it. Instead, take the time to find the best deal for you. And Wallet Hub is out with 50 fun facts about New Year's Eve. They found 83% of Americans spend less than 200 bucks on New Year's Eve celebrations. About a quarter of those surveyed plan to celebrate at home. 45% say they will celebrate with family, while only 15% said they'll attend a public event or party. 12% of Americans will fall asleep before midnight, and 54% of respondents said they will ring in the new year with a kiss. The average hourly rate for a babysitter jumps to 16 to 40 per hour, a 20% premium over any other night of the year. 3% of Americans do not plan to celebrate the holiday at all.